Good morning. <clears throat> Just lifted my van. It's about 12 after 5. I'm going to go over behind me there. There you can see my tripod over there. I'm going to go over there and do the video for today. But I wanted to lift my banner. Uh, just show that uh, normally what I do when I get out here is I uh, set up, I get ready to go. I lift the banner for a few minutes just to see uh, what's going on, spiritually speaking, and uh, just get a, a better idea. And then I put my banner down, and uh, then I go do my video. Then I come back and lift my banner again. And uh, then I go for about an hour, hour and sometimes a little more in a supplicational prayer that I pray uh, out loud uh, so everybody can hear me. And uh, uh, then I lift up the message that God has on my heart for this area here where at Iris and Broadway. So uh, I'm gonna let you go. So this is my banner right here, as you know. Uh, we have Jesus Christ on one side and we have Beloved on the other. This banner for 2022 is called Beloved. So uh, sorry for the shaking. But anyways, we'll talk to you in just a second, okay? Why that is so funny to me to walk up to the camera like that. Uh, I'm actually behind the camera 10 feet or 6 feet praying, asking the Lord for help. <laughs> so this is uh, Iris, the cars coming off there are Iris. I'm standing in the shade because it's about 81, 82, 83 degrees out there in the uh, sun and uh, I can't lift my banner because of the uh, wind and do my video. But when I'm done with my video, I'll lift the banner and hide behind the shade of my banner. <laughs> One of the benefits of having a big four foot by four foot banner, you get to hide in the shade <laughs> of the banner. Uh, kind of a scriptural thing if you look or think about it. So I'm in the tree, kind of in a bike path here and a little bit of trees here. So uh, uh, this is Monday, uh, Preacher John, uh, Boulder, Colorado, uh, on the front range. Uh, just about 30 miles, 35 miles outside of Denver and uh, about halfway in the state from Wyoming to New Mexico and uh, about a little over halfway between Utah and Kansas, right in the middle of the United States, roughly speaking. Uh, even Kansas, you know. Anyways, uh, that's where I am and this is the north end of Boulder. This is called North Boulder. So. Uh, I'm in 20 some odd different corners, 25 different locations here in the city, and 14 other cities, including Boulder, 13 plus uh, Boulder, 14. And uh, six days a week, and uh, we've been doing this in two more weeks, Memorial Day weekend will be my three year anniversary, and I start my fourth year of my 10 year window of uh, banner preaching and ministering for building Gospel Evangelist Church and uh, building the kingdom of God. I hope this is coming through. Uh, thank you for being here. Let's uh, let's pray, okay? If you you know feel led to, <laughs> Lord, I just thank you for allowing us to come together and to hear what you have to say in the in your holy scriptures. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to teach us things that we may not have never heard before, or you're going to bring back to our remembrance the things we have heard before, and that we'll be able to apply them because you give us power to be a witness to all the people who are in our life. And I thank you, Lord, for filling us with your beautiful, wonderful Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we fully and completely welcome you and turn this over to your lead and your guidance. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I go, you know, when I lift my, leave my corner, I always uh, give everything to the Father. I worship the Father. I give all this to, to the Father. And so if you notice, uh, I'm a little bit of a different preacher uh, because, uh, I pray and I acknowledge the Godhead. Uh, I don't pray to a trinity. I don't pray to uh, uh, any kind of idol. I pray to Almighty God, and God is a, uh, is, there's a Godhead. And in 1 John 5, 7, it's the Father, uh, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And that makes up, that's one, that makes God. Uh, just like, and we're made in that image, God's image and likeness. We're just like God. We're. Uh, that, you know, it's not three individual separate gods, one God. 
And in the Trinity, I don't know why I'm saying this, <laughs> um, but in the Trinity doctrine, there isn't one God. Uh, they say it, but they don't really, uh, the, only, the only reason they say it is because uh, it's true. <laughs> but what they really say before that is there's three gods, three individual separate gods. And uh, that's not true. Uh, there's only one. And uh, uh, it's one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why uh, I caution people to you using uh, words and terminologies and phrases that come from, I hear a bill lawnmower behind me there. I hope he's not gonna come down through here. He might. <laughs> but uh, uh, words and phrases and uh, catch words from uh, other, uh, what I call cult denominations. Uh, uh, because there's denominations that say Jesus Christ, but they're not of the Jesus that you and I are from, if you're a born again believer. If you're not born again and you're not a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, this would be another great day. Every day that I preach to me is a great day to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, Romans 10, 13 says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. Uh, uh, and it doesn't delineate, uh, you have to be this, or you have to be that, or you have to, yeah, here he comes, oh boy. I'm gonna cut this off right now. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that lawnmower guy, the par county parks guy, wanted to mow all this, so I had to move over there for a few minutes. Uh, boy, <laughs> you guys uh, get, I hope this is, uh, is this okay? I don't know. Uh, anyways, <laughs> outside, you know. Oh, all you guys are preaching inside of buildings and churches and bedrooms and living rooms and dens. <laughs> you ought to preach outside for a while. <laughs> you'll, you'll see that it's a whole lot different preaching outside, especially when you go to a lot of different locations. So but, uh, anyways, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was talking about uh, using catchphrases and uh, so caution yourself on using catchphrases. Uh, I don't know why certain uh, uh, denominations have to use these catchphrases when they know they're not, it's not in the Word of God that they're preaching from. And it really bugs me because it points to something that they, sh they preach against. See, that's what confuses me. Why do you preach against it and then partake of it? It's like preaching against an idol and then taking part of the idol worship. Uh, that people do that. Pe Christians do that. And it just blows my mind how they are able to do that without a conviction in their heart. Uh, it just, I don't get it. I don't get it. But uh, that's why I'm not God. <laughs> and none of us are. That's why Almighty God. Anyways, I don't want to go any more there because that's a real touchy subject for a lot of people. They want to do what they want to do because of their church or their denomination or their upbringing or you know, whatever the case may be. That's why I caution everybody on the preacher you're listening to, the preacher's books that you're reading, and the uh, church that you're going to, and the uh, praise songs that you're listening to. There's a lot of occult symbols that are in the body of Christ, and people are using those cult principles, uh, symbols, cult symbols, as a form of decoration, as a form of jewelry as a form of coolness to relate. <laughs> you don't need to use an idol to relate to the sinner. I guarantee it. <laughs> you don't need to look like a sinner, act like a sinner, be like a sinner to lead sinners to the Lord. You know, you don't have to be a drug addict to lead people to Jesus Christ. You don't have to be an alcoholic to lead people to Jesus. You don't have to be a pornography type person whatever you call that, uh, to lead people to Christ. You want to be holy. You want to be pure. You want to be without blame. You want to be filled with the Spirit of God. You want to have your mind renewed to the Word of God. It's, you, you want to walk in the light uh, and walk in the love of God. God is love. And uh, so I just want to exhort, ex exhort you guys to, you know, whoever's listening, uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, Follow the Bible, the Word of God, King James Bible, you know, and uh,
I could just feel every time I mention the Bible, people just get so touchy. I could just, I sense it around me. I love it. <laughs> I love shaking people's cages. <laughs> wake up, wake up, get out of that cage. The door is open. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to get out of my cage. I like it in here. It's safe. Nobody's going to hurt me. <laughs> Nobody's going to put me down, you know. <laughs> Uh, you do that, not me. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> I got this big old sign behind me. I see it keeps coming up in the video, but oh well. <laughs> so uh, let's pray, okay? So Lord, I just thank you again for allowing us to pray one more time. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're able to uh, touch us and to uh, do whatever it is you're doing out here on the street. I praise you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. All right, so now, sorry, every, every, every video is different. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, it, you know, I need to talk about this. Sorry about this, I need to talk about it. Uh, but this is our structure for our ministry. We have three titles. The first title that is over our ministry, as you know, is The Word of God, it's found in Revelation 19:13, And I'll quote it to you from the King James only. For he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called The Word of God of God, the Word of God. Uh, this book is not Jesus. I don't know why people think the book is Jesus, uh, that this book is uh, what uh, uh, they're exalting. You know, well, I, I, no, it's all right. You know, I mean, this is the living Word, I guess you'd say, but he is the, Jesus is the living Word. Just be alert to that. And what I always tell people is uh, when you're in, under the Word of God, like this ministry is, and it seems like most of my time in the ministry, uh, I'm always uh, looking around to see if I'm doing something that's not correct or in the Word of God. And lo and behold, sometimes there is. And uh, that's why I listen to everybody's comments. I try to read all the comments. That's why I pray about all the comments. I like all the comments. Uh, uh, very rarely that I'll uh, delete a comment without posting it. I have to read all the comments before they go up uh, on the front page. Uh, just, I just want to protect the channel because I don't want YouTube to, to delete the channel. A lot of people don't realize that the owner of the channel, such as myself, the owner of this channel, uh, I am responsible for the comments. And if some of the comments are uh, violate the policies and procedures uh, of YouTube, my channel can be uh, uh, re uh, censored or deleted or whatever they do. So it's the owner's responsibility for the uh, comments. That's why I have all comments I have to look at before they are posted. So, but very rarely, most of the guys, even the guys who don't like me or who hate on me or who mock me and uh, who are of a different camp, uh, you know, they're all pretty nice to me, actually. Uh, I'm nice to them. They're nice to me. You know, we just don't agree, and that's all right. They, save, they serve a God. I serve a God. And, uh, you know, but most of them, I mean, some of them put, you know, dislike, dislike, but, you know, uh, Generally speaking, um, I care for them and I love uh, the mocker and uh, or the hater who doesn't like me personally or like my ministry or like Jesus or like the Bible that I'm reading. But they're all pretty uh, cordial to me. They're pretty nice to me uh, in a general sense. <laughs> but uh, and I am to them. I don't hate on them. I love my enemy. I'm not saying that they're an enemy, but uh, uh, you know. Uh, when somebody flips you off and cusses at you, and it's really difficult to love on them, but I still uh, do all I can to love on people who curse me out. <laughs> Why not, right? So, Under the Word of God is our seasonal title. It's, it's this season we're in is Breakthrough, Overcome. It's found in Numbers 1330. And it says, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Well able to overcome it. Amen? So under our, the Word of God, under our seasonal title, is our weekly title. It changes every Sunday morning. This Sunday is May 15th, Sunday prayer letter, and it is titled, Worship God. Worship God. And our title is found in Revelation 22.9. 22, I'm reading my notes here. 22.9. And uh, in our Sunday prayer letter, we have seven parts, one part for each day of the week. Part one starts on the first day of the week, Sunday, and we go all the way to the seventh day, Saturday. 
I don't preach on Saturday, but it's here available to those who want to preach on Saturday. And uh, you know, once again, I think it would be really cool. I, maybe not, but it just keeps coming to me quite often. I, probably, I must have mentioned this a dozen times over the last couple of years that, uh, you know, if I'm pre like today is uh, part two, uh, a Monday, Genesis 24, 26. <clears throat> and I'm actually gonna preach on 26 and 27, Genesis 24. But wouldn't it be cool that, uh, you know, we listen to the video, uh, we go out into our corner and preach the same sermon, not same sermon, the same scripture uh, based upon what the Holy Ghost is leading us to and to the same different people. And we create a video with the same scripture. I, you know, and we can't, you know, it all goes out with the same scripture on the same day. Because, uh, you know, all you got to do is go to my Sunday prayer letter on my website, and you can see what I'm going to be preaching on today, because you won't see this till uh, Tuesday morning. This is Monday, Tuesday morning. Because it won't be uploaded till 11 or 12 o'clock tonight. Sorry I'm yelling. It's so noisy out here. I can't hear myself talk when I'm out here on the street. I don't have my earplugs in. I'll put them in just a moment. But uh, anyways, it's just something I thought would be kind of cool. Then you can read the Sunday prayer letter and kind of get an idea of uh, the theme for the week. Uh, and I don't do any teaching in the letter. I just kind of talk. <clears throat> we have two parts to the letter, the smaller section for the emails that go out and for our teaching on our Wednesday class, Wednesday house church. And then the rest of the letter uh, is below that. So it's quite a long letter. It's probably about 3,000 words. Uh, so it's pretty long. And uh, it takes me four hours, five hours, six hours to do the letter every week, every Saturday afternoon. So, so anyway, and then today you'll be preaching on Genesis 24 to 6. So I'll read that, uh, and then we'll talk on that. 20, what is it again? Genesis. I don't know why I keep going to Revelation. But it's uh, Genesis 24, 26. This is where uh, today's uh, part number is. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. Real short verse there. I've been putting them in the uh, video here. I hope that's okay. So uh, uh, what I want to do, now so you can see uh, our title came out of 22.9. I better read that too so you'll know it came out of the scripture. 22 verse 9 of uh, Revelation 22.9. Then saith he unto me, this is an angel speaking, to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos as he was being, uh, uh, Jesus Christ was being revealed to him in the future. Uh, See thou do it not, for I am the fellow, thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God, worship God, worship God. Once again, worship is a two-part word. The W-R stands for worth, worth, uh, like net worth or worthy, uh, means valuable, lots of wealth within you. And you take that wealth that's within you and then you ship it. And ship, S-H-I-P is another word to, uh, I wish I looked this up again, but it's something like uh, uh, a principal item or a focal point or a, uh, a title that is supreme uh, or you know it's something like that maybe tonight I'll try to look that up I looked it up and that's why I'm trying to say it like this so it's the idea of worship is giving your whole wealth of everything you are to God worship God means that it means to everything that you are you just don't use it with your lips worship God with your lips or worship God you take everything that's within you everything around you you take your whole life and you lift it up to God and that's worth ship because God is worthy and you're worthy to worship God if you're a born again believer uh, you're a child of God God is the creator almighty God right so uh, in this verse here, I, I want to talk about something real quick. Uh, we're actually going to do 26 and 27. Uh, I'll do 26 again here in Genesis. We're in Genesis now. Uh, chapter 24, verse 26. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. Now we know what this is, right? Well, this is, uh, I think this is, this, this is the story of Abraham sending his servant out, or was it Isaac sending his servant out to go get a wife 
for Isaac. So this is his head servant going out, being led by the Spirit of God to find this needle in a haystack. <laughs> and God leads him right directly to the very first person, the needle that's in the haystack. <laughs> miracle, it's a miracle. And this is why he is so, uh, uh, wants to worship God. And this is what he did. He said, and the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. So when you worship God, it is a bowing down. It is going to your face or going to your knees. It is surrendering all yourself. It's even laying prostrate on the floor. I mean, lowering yourself to the absolute physical lowest possible, allowing everything you have to go up to God. It's very important. Now, worship is a whole lot different than praise, you know. You, we kind of put them together, but there is a difference between worship and praise, okay? But I'm not gonna talk about praise, I'm talking about worship. Okay, so right here it says, uh, one of the uh, attributes or one of the concepts or one of the points in worship is you bow down. In the King James Bible, uh, usually to the words you're looking for, you wanna define right next to it or somewhere in the area or the next couple of verses around that topic, you'll see the definition of the word you're looking for, which is here is worship. So one of the ideas is to bow down, bow down. All through the Bible, you'll see them, people when they worship God, they bow down, they bow down. That's a, it's a physical, physical, I'm showing God my faith by physically bowing my body to God. That's why it frustrates me when in church, they say, well, I bow down to you, Lord, some kind of a song like that. And I look around and nobody bows and I'm on the floor bowing down to God. But nobody else does it. So they, they give God praise with their lips, but with their body, they don't. See, that's not worship. That's called something else. <laughs> so if in the song that you're singing and it says, I lift my hands, then lift your hands. If the song that you're singing says, I bow down, then bow down. You know, if the song that you're singing says, I dance before the Lord, then dance before the Lord, you know? I mean, do what you're singing. If you're not doing what you're singing, then your faith is empty. Because James says, I'll show you my faith by my actions. And faith pleases God. So that's why bowing down when you worship is important. Important. That's why he did this. He didn't have to do this, but he already knows that's what you do. Yeah. It's not tradition. And I've got to get that out there too. It's not tradition. This is how God is mustache. Sorry. Anyways, anyways, verse 27, and he said, blessed be the Lord God. He was blessing God. Now, people around him probably heard him. Maybe the lady that she, he found by the power of God was hearing him bless Almighty God. What a wonderful testimony on who he serves, his master. Not just God, but his earthly master, his person he works for, the boss. Not this boss, but his other boss. She would say, man, he must work for a really good guy, you know, to him to, you know. I mean, you don't know. I mean, there's a lot in the story. We just have a little snippet of the real story, okay? We'll know the rest of it later. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham. You know, how about that, you know? He's actually on an assignment, physically gone on a trip, on an adventure to find this needle in a haystack. and." He is telling the people around him and telling Almighty God that my master is blessed. Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham. You know? And in blessing people, you bless God. When you bless God, you bless people. When you love God, you love people. It's one of the, you know, that's the golden rule, right? Do unto God as you should, you want to do, that God wants to do to you. If you want God to love you, then love God. You know, if, if you, if you want to hate on God, then guess what God's going to do? He's going to hate on you. I mean, sounds kind of weird to say that, but, uh, uh, you know, and you, if you love on people, they'll love on you. If you hate on people, guess what they're going to do? They're going to hate on you. I mean, it's just, that's life. You know, that's how God made it. That's the golden rule, right? Or the two, the two laws that all the prophets hang on, you know, love God with all your whole soul and mind and love people you know, as yourself. And that's not self-love. That's, that's new age cultic. That's not what it's talking about. 
Coming back to our verse here in verse 27. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, I being in the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. The Lord led him to. I mean, he was... He had a testimony that he was sharing, not just to the people, but to God, of what God has done for him. It was a miracle in his life. Because I remember, if you read the story, I think he was thinking to himself, my master's sending me out, how am I gonna find this lady? <laughs> Help me, God. <laughs> you know? And he asked, guess what? God answered his prayer, answered his request. And uh, that's how it works, okay? So, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, so how do you apply this? How do you put this into your life? How do you recap or have a takeaway from this? And that is, uh, uh, number one, ask God for help. When you're gonna go find that needle in a haystack, uh, say you're looking for a, a husband or a wife, and a husband if you're female, and a wife if you're a male. <laughs> Clarify that. And uh, so uh, uh, you ask, you ask God, and God's going to lead you and guide you. And uh, that's what's going to happen, okay? God bless you, sir. <laughs> Doing my sermon. <laughs> and uh, God's going to provide for you. It's Jehovah Jireh. We read that yesterday, I think, or the day before, sometime. Uh, uh, yeah, yesterday, Sunday, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, God's provision shall be seen on the mountain. The mountain of God, God's provision shall be seen. Sometimes you got to go up to the mountain of God to see God's provision. You know, I had to come to Boulder. I had to leave Redding, California to come to this mountain town to see God's provision. Strange, right? I mean, even God provides no matter where you are. God provided me for in Redding, too. I'm not saying that. I'm just playing on words here, you know. Uh, anyways, so uh, ask and then move on faith. The master didn't sit at home. The servant didn't sit at home asking and asking and asking and asking and asking. He asked one time and they began to move on faith. Peter asked Jesus one time, call me, come, tell me to come or something like that. And Jesus says, come. And he went. That's how he asked, God spoke, you act. One, two, three. So his master, the servant asked God, he heard God say, go. He went on faith and found the needle in the haystack. <laughs> you know, ask on faith, you know. Ask believing that you will receive. You know, the servant asked believing that he would receive. You know. So sometimes you have to wait upon the Lord for a little bit for the question to ask because sometimes you don't know the question Lord what do I ask I don't even know what to ask that's a good question that's called humbling yourself don't pretend like you're somebody important don't pretend like you know it all God knows it all you don't amen so let's pray so Lord I just thank you that uh, uh, we can humble ourselves we can bow down before on our floor, on the ground, and we can worship you. And we thank you, Lord, that we can do that because of the power of Almighty God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, even here on this street corner and out here on this video. And I thank you, Lord, that we can lift up uh, the Word of God and we can minister, we can preach, we can do all kinds of things in the ministry, being an evangelist for Almighty God. And we just dedicate this sermon, we dedicate this time, we dedicate this corner, we dedicate everything to Almighty God. And Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise for what is happening on this sermon, on this video channel, and on this street corner. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. That's why I say, because a very strong, I changed it, if you've seen many, many videos ago, I changed it from in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because uh, Paul said to do all things in word and deed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, something like that. So tomorrow, tomorrow is uh, Tuesday, and Tuesday, where am I gonna be on Tuesday? I don't have my calendar. These pants don't fit my calendar, so my calendar's in my pocket. Where am I on Tuesday? Uh, 
I don't know, somewhere in Boulder. <laughs> so it's on my calendar. I don't have to guess where I'm gonna go. I know where I'm gonna go, it just has to be written down way over there in my pack. So I'll put it in the video here, okay? So uh, have a great day, man. God bless you. <laughs> I love you very much, take care.